Hi guys, we'll wait just a couple more minutes and then we'll get started right at three. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, first, I just want to say thank you for signing up for this webinar and helping us to kick off our 2020 Virtual Earth Month webinar series. We are really excited to share more about what the Office of Sustainability does, who we are, and how folks can get involved. Uh, but before we start, I just wanted to share some tips for how to get the most out of this webinar. First, just want to make sure um, that your mic is muted. If you are on Zoom, that you make sure that your gallery view is turned on. Uh, a lot of us are working from home and we know how many distractions come along with that. So if possible, you know, shut the door or put away that window that you're working on and try to be present for this hour. And I just encourage you to get comfortable, grab a drink, grab a pen and paper for notes and settle in for the hour. And lastly, if you have any questions throughout this webinar, go ahead and drop them in the chat box that is down below. We're gonna be answering those questions as we go. So we're not gonna wait until the end to address them. So don't shy away from posting those questions. So first, we kinda wanna get to know you. So I'm gonna put a poll up on your screen should be popping up right now and we just want to know more about who you are uh, how much you feel comfortable with sustainability this will help us to tailor this experience for you to make sure that you get the most out of it so i'm just going to give you all just a few minutes to go ahead and fill out that poll on your screen and we'll go from there All right, so we look like we have a few people that are pretty knowledgeable of sustainability. One or two that we could go into more detail. Also worth noting, this webinar is going to be recorded. And so 
we're going to try to put out there a little bit of something for everybody. Here we go. So first, what is sustainability? The million dollar question. Sustainability has kind of become this buzzword that evokes all kinds of ideas and concepts. And so first we thought it would be good to set the stage, get on the same page and you know, share what sustainability means to us. So the most widely recognized definition of sustainability comes from the UN Brundtland Commission, reads meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs. I read that as making sure that our pursuit of maintaining our life and our lifestyle, we are not depleting the earth of vital resources that future generations are going to need in order for them to maintain a comfortable lifestyle, much like what we have now. So for that, they're gonna need clean air, they're gonna need clean water, arable land to grow food, so on and so forth. And so our standard operating uh, way right now is not really conducive to this. We're currently producing a lot of waste, a lot of carbon pollution. We're warming the air, which is causing the ice caps to melt, which is rising sea levels. And so you can see uh, the problem is not just one thing, but there are many, many sources and factors like our energy production, transportation and agriculture, just to name a few. So sustainability isn't any one given thing, it's systemic. And that's why it can't really be easily defined, but rather it needs to be integrated into everything. So I personally like to look at sustainability as a lens through which to view the world and reimagine those systems in a way that is truly sustainable. So quickly, I just wanna share that sustainability is not just about the environment. There are three pillars to sustainability the environment, the economy, and our society. And for a solution to be truly sustainable, it has to take all three into account. So the environment is sustainable when we're using natural resources at a rate at which the earth can naturally regenerate them. Our economy is sustainable when businesses and countries are using resources efficiently and responsibly so that they can continue to operate indefinitely. And our society or any societal system is sustainable when we are putting the health and well being of people first. So, as you can see through this diagram, uh, the majority of the world's most pressing issues can be solved by looking through the lens of sustainability and reimagining what those systems can look like when they're in balance. And I just want to share this diagram as well. The Venn diagram before is the most commonly used, but this diagram uses concentric circles to highlight the importance of the environment in our community, because the well-being of the economy in our community is dependent on the environment's well-being. And the same way, the well-being of uh, an economy is dependent on the community in which it, it operates. So you can see it's all kind of interdependent, but the most importance is on the environment. So now to dive into the good stuff, I'm gonna turn it over to Jessica, who's gonna talk about sustainability at IUPUI. Take it away. Sure. Uh, hi, I'm Jessica, Director of Sustainability here at IUPUI. Uh, we can go to the next slide, Christina. I'm just gonna give you a real quick overview of, of uh, kind of who we are and what we do before we get into some of the nitty gritty. Um, so you can see our mission here uh, on the screen really is to try to um, infuse sustainability into as many decisions that the campus makes um, and also that permeates beyond the campus too into community support. So as you're going to see in this presentation that tends to fall into three main pools or buckets of, of effort. So in academics, operations and engagement and we'll kind of get into the details of that later. Next slide, Christina. So a little bit about the office. So we have three full-time staff, uh, myself, Deb, and Christina. We also have 11 interns and those interns, their efforts focus on different uh, areas of sustainability. So you can see the list here, uh, ranging from uh, engagement to uh, some of the details around energy and waste auditing on campus, 
uh, we tend to align our internships with where we are, are working the most in our sustainability strategy for the campus. So their efforts are uh, very hands on and they get to actually see the fruits of their labor uh, while they're working with us. Next slide. Also, just a heads up that IEPY is a member of AISHI. So AISHI is the Association for the Advancement of Sustainability in Higher Ed. Uh, there are over a thousand universities across the globe that are members of AISHI. Um, and it's a way for us to share best practices uh, in the higher education sector. And AISHI also has a, an annual conference and also has a tool that's called STARS, which we'll see on the next slide. Uh, STARS stands for Sustainability Tracking Assessment and Rating System. It's a self-reporting framework uh, that universities use to assess their sustainability efforts. Um, and here on this slide are some of the things that we have to look at. Uh, STARS is, is a pretty intensive effort. Uh, we have to look across the campus landscape to get a hold of all of this data. And then based on how uh, sustainable your answers are, you actually earn points uh, across, across all of these categories. So the more sustainable answer you have, the more points that you earn, and then your points will indicate what rating you have as a campus. Um, so as of this year, actually 2019, uh, IEPI, we were a, a gold rated institution. We're actually the, the second most sustainable in the state uh, after IU Bloomington. So now we're going to get into some of the details around what our work looks like and then also ways folks can get can get involved or uh, honestly, this is also a great way to, to replicate uh, efforts. Um, Usually sustainability goals for most people might be about the same, but how we get there is customized based on the organization or the folks involved. So don't necessarily look at this and think, oh, you know, that's just something IEPY can do. I would encourage you to think, you know, how can this be adapted to my organization or to my community? Next slide. So first we'll start with energy. Uh, this is a big one. Uh, IEPY is a, a very large uh, energy user here in Indianapolis. So we're a medical campus. We have uh, research facilities that are energy intensive running 24 7. So any way we can reduce our, our energy demand is going to be a, a great way that we can reduce our carbon footprint and also save the university some significant uh, funds. So just and I will say that all of these things that we're going to go through are just the highlight reel. Um, it's not necessarily the nitty gritty of what we do, uh, but happy to answer questions um, if folks have, want more detailed information. Um, so in the energy sector, uh, we do purchase electricity, uh, renewable electricity through IPL's green power option. That is a, a program that is available to just normal users at home too. So I'm enrolled in the green power option in my house. Uh, so 10% of the total electricity that we buy as a campus, we purchase through that, which means we're, we're purchasing what are called RECs, R-E-C, RECs, which is a renewable energy certificate. Uh, we also have solar on campus, which is what this picture uh, shows here. It's on top of the business FIA building, about 164 panels. And that's our only solar installation currently. Um, hopefully looking at uh, ways that we can add more as the price continues to drop. Uh, because of our uh, the amount of renewable electricity that we purchase, we've actually been recognized by the EPA um, oh, every year since probably 2013. Uh, we're an EPA Green Power Partner and we've uh, won that award for universities in our athletic division uh, every year since 2013 because of how much renewable energy we use. So they, they group us by our, our athletic divisions and have us compete against each other. One engagement program that we have on campus is the IEPY Energy Challenge. And this is a way that we um, try to incentivize people to reduce their energy usage through competition. Uh, so what we do is we have buildings compete against each other to see who can reduce the most amount of energy over a three week period in comparison to themselves. Right, so, for example, uh, North Hall, which is one of our residence halls, is actually competing against itself. So it's whoever reduces their energy by the highest percentage compared to cross buildings wins. Um, so over this three week period, we've been able to see some, um, it's actually been significant. Uh, worth doing it again, uh, for sure. And we're actually looking at how we can get scale this challenge to be campus wide. Uh, and then hopefully one day we can have IU and IUPUI compete against each other and other IU campuses too. So it's, it's been a great way to just get folks involved and drive our energy usage down. Next slide. Uh, built environment. Uh, IEPY is one of uh, the seven uh, Indian University campuses, uh, and Indiana, Indian University has a, a LEED policy. So uh, all of our new buildings are supposed to be built to LEED gold certification level. Um, it was silver, and it has since been updated to gold. 
So on the IEPY campus, we have seven LEED certified buildings. We have another one under construction right now, Innovation Hall. So that will bring it to eight. And you can see the building shake out there as far as which ones are certified gold and silver. Um, and fun fact, IU has more LEED buildings than any university in the Big Ten. So that's a really great kind of sustainability feather in our cap uh, as an enterprise university. Next slide. Food. Um, so a lot of us are from Indianapolis, so we, we may be understand the fact that Indianapolis is a pretty big food desert. So food access and food quality is an issue. And that same pattern holds on IEPY's campus as well. Um, about 40% of our students have experienced some kind of food insecurity uh, while they're here. So any way we can address that problem while also demonstrating uh, sustainable practices not only solves the community and campus problem, but also helps us meet our sustainability goals. So from a food perspective, uh, we do grow food on campus. We have two urban gardens. The one that's pictured there is the New York Street Garden. That's the, the larger of the two that we have. Uh, all the produce that's grown there is grown organically. And uh, it's mainly used on campus. So it goes back, it's incorporated into some of the meals in uh, our, our dining facilities. It also gets donated to our on-campus food pantry and also the campus kitchen, which I'll talk about here in a couple minutes. Um, and we also have a fresh produce market, which is an on-campus farmer's market uh, once a month. So the vast majority of that uh, stays on campus. Some of it will get donated if we have excess. So I mentioned the fresh produce market, that's our on-campus farmer's market. Uh, all the produce is sold at cost, so that's an accessibility point. Uh, we, the campus does not mark that up to ensure that as many folks as possible can take advantage of that. Uh, the Campus Kitchen is a, a student-powered organization. It has administrative oversight by our office where we take food uh, that was left over on campus that would have otherwise been thrown away, but it's perfectly edible, and the students rescue that turn it into nutritious meals and then distribute those meals uh, here on campus as well as to the community. So it's a way to uh, minimize our waste uh, through rescuing, but then also address our uh, food problem. Paul's Pantry is our on-campus food pantry. Um, so that's accessible to students, faculty, and staff. As long as you have your university ID, you can take advantage of that service. It's free, uh, no, really no questions asked. You can go in and, and take what you want. The Campus Kitchen actually provides single, uh, like take home meals to the Paws Pantry, as well as some of the produce from our gardens. So folks can like take home a microwave meal that's been hopefully nutri nutritionally balanced. We also have a green catering guide that we released, I guess it was late last year. And this has been our way of encouraging the campus to adopt more sustainable uh, food choices, especially for catered events and especially for those that are like 100 or more, so like big catered events. So this guide uh, rec has recommended best practices like asking for vegetarian or vegan options. You can also make requests for local options, like all of these things are available to us, zero waste catering. Um, so in order to, we put that together into a, a handy little guide for the campus in order to guide folks uh, through that process of procurement. Next slide. Transportation. Uh, so IEPY is right downtown. So luckily we have the benefit of um, being able to use all of our Indianapolis resources, but we also, um, have our own resources to complement that. Uh, so we're a pretty pedestrian friendly campus, uh, especially with the conversion of New York and Michigan to two way streets instead of one way streets. It's definitely slowed folks down and allowed us to invest in new infrastructure. Uh, we have the Jagline shuttle service, which um, is our on campus shuttle service. It's free to use, uh, even for the community can use it as well. We've got about six or seven lines that uh, run daily to different locations on campus. So it's a great way for folks to just, you know, park their car once and then they can walk around campus wherever they need to go. We also have connected the JAG line to Indigo and the red line. So we have a, a dedicated shuttle that runs out to the, the closest red line stop to IEPY. And Indigo also has uh, dedicated stops along Michigan Street through the thoroughfare of campus. Uh, we actually have quite a few bike resources as well. So we have off-road, off-sidewalk bike lanes. Those came with Michigan and New York Street uh, conversions to two-way bike storage facility, maintenance stations. Uh, we have the, the Pacers bike share on campus. We have indoor showers. So try to encourage folks to, again, get away, get around on campus uh, via different mechanisms. And of course, the electric scooters, we have those as well. Uh, definitely support 
students, well, anyone really, uh, kind of using those to get around, but trying to do that safely and get out the message about, you know, where can you park those uh, so that, you know, they're out of folks' way. But ultimately, our goal on campus is to, you know, try to minimize as many single occupancy vehicles as possible. Or if you are going to park, you know, park once and then walk, bike, or shuttle the rest of the day uh, instead of moving your car around between meetings or class. Next slide. And then this last category in operations we're going to cover uh, is waste. And kind of the way that we've ordered this is the order of reduce, reuse, recycle. Um, so one of our big uh, reuse efforts is we have a surplus uh, office here at IEPUI. So any university property, once folks either don't need it anymore or it's reached the end of its lifespan, it goes to surplus. And once it's in surplus, then any university uh, folks can go there and buy items for their office. So for example, if I needed a new desk for my office, you could buy a new one for a lot of money, or you could go to surplus and get one that maybe somebody else got rid of for, you know, pretty inexpensive. Uh, so that incentivizes folks to reuse instead of buy new. Pause Closet, similar to Pause Pantry, is our on-campus uh, clothing closet that's available to, to, to students. So uh, they take donations of clothing and also folks can come in and shop if they need anything. We also capture a lot of waste during our move outs for our residence halls. Um, you'd be surprised what students like to throw away because they don't want to move home, uh, take it with them when they move back home. So things like televisions, microwaves, mini fridges, try to capture as much of that as possible. A lot of it gets, if it's still usable, a lot of it gets donated to Goodwill. Um, and then the rest that, that can't be reused and actually needs to be disposed of, we try to dispose of appropriately. We do have single stream recycling at IEPY. You can see the, the image there. Uh, and so single, we are contracted with RAISE, so we can take a lot of the big categories, paper, plastic, glass, metal. Um, we're able to take quite a few items, actually. And uh, so those, we try to have the uh, no bin left behind. So all of our bins are paired on campus. They have appropriate signage um, as a way to make it as easy as possible. Already mentioned the Campus Kitchen does food, race, food waste rescue. So again, they're repurposing that into meals. And then we also have a pre-consumer composting program on, ca on campus. So in the couple of areas where most of our food waste is generated, usually dining areas, um, they're composting that waste uh, behind the scenes uh, during the prep process. Maybe one day we'll be ready for post-consumer, but in the meantime, we're, we're nailing down our efforts on pre-consumer. Next slide. And now I'm going to turn it back over to Christina, who's going to cover some of our academic efforts as well as engagement. Thank you, Jessica. All right. So as an institution of higher education, academics is pretty important to us. Um, as you can see, we have a number of graduate and undergraduate degree programs where you can get experience and sustainability None of these programs are going to necessarily teach you absolutely everything that there is about sustainability. That's more of a lifelong process because sustainability is uh, so massive. But these programs will give you that lens that we were talking about. So for example, we have programs about health, public health management, policy, law, technology, all through this lens of sustainability. And even if you're not in one of those degree programs, you can still get knowledge of sustainable, sustainable solutions through certificates. Uh, there are graduate and undergraduate certificates like the sustainable technology certificate, there's product stewardship certificate, and even a certificate in hybrid electric vehicle technology. There are also a lot of different ways that you can apply what you're learning in the classroom uh, through hands-on experiences here on campus. For example, we have an internship program, like Jessica mentioned earlier, we have 11 interns in our office who very much operate as staff in terms of their scope and impact. They're very active across campus and implementing these solutions. And if you are even remotely interested in an internship, I would recommend that you just reach out to us and talk to us because there is lots of work to be done. Uh, there's also, ISCP, the Indiana Sustainability Development Program, a workforce development program out of IU Bloomington that places students from all disciplines, places them with nonprofits, uh, for-profit businesses, and municipalities to do all kinds of hands-on sustainability projects like climate action planning, greenhouse gas inventories, and the implementation of sustainability programs, et cetera. 
living lab projects, what that means is uh, you take a classroom project and you apply it to a real world issue, sustain specifically on campus. So we frequently work with courses, capstone groups, and even individual students to create meaningful projects that uh, result in real sustainability solutions for our campus. And there are also study abroad opportunities. I know the School of um, Engineering and Technology has their Go Green courses in France and Germany, and O'Neill also offers uh, an array of sustainability study abroad courses in Costa Rica, London, Vietnam, and more. Now engagement, as the engagement coordinator, this is my favorite part of the presentation. The first thing I wanna highlight is greening IUPUI grants. The Office of Sustainability awards $50,000 worth of grants for sustainability projects to be implemented here on campus. Um, these Grants are eligible for students, faculty, and staff, anyone that has an idea that would make our campus more sustainable. And past projects have included solar-powered umbrellas that are outside of the library, the seed library, hand dryers, and dual flush toilets that conserve energy and water and materials, and even the ground, grounds equipment that you see here. Those are all electric, zero emission. Our grounds team applied for this and received it a couple of years ago. Uh, so yeah, so if you have an idea for how our campus can be more sustainable, those applications are due in the spring. There's also the energy challenge that Jessica mentioned earlier. This is a great way for everybody on campus to, to be activated and reduce their energy use in whatever way that they can. Even though we only measure the energy usage in a number, a handful of buildings, this program is open to everybody on campus. We, we want to see energy usage go down, even in the buildings where we're not measuring currently. And of course, the winners will receive a celebration party, they'll get bragging rights, and they'll get their name on the banner in the campus center. There's also the clean plate challenge. This program evolved out of our food waste audits that we were conducting in Tower Dining once per semester. We're now doing it on an ongoing basis once a month. And we are not only waste or measuring how much food is wasted every lunch shift, but we are also rewarding folks that come back with clean plates. Um, we have little prizes. We have social media shout outs. And of course you have the rewarding feeling of knowing that you did not waste any food that day. Um, and then also we just wanted to mention something interesting, which is that tower dining switched to smaller plates and that one small action alone really reduced the amount of food that was wasted during, during those meals. So interesting tidbit. We also have tree plantings once per semester. Uh, little known fact maybe is that we are the largest adopt a block uh, captain in all of Indianapolis. We have adopted about 50 or 60 blocks of campus and maintain those. And so therefore we have tree plantings every fall and spring. This year, we've of course moved to virtual, so we will still have programming on Arbor Day, April 24th, about how you plant a tree and, and tree maintenance, kind of 101, so stay tuned for that. And lastly, we also have Beautify IUPUI volunteer sessions, typically on the first Friday of every month. Right now, of course, those are put on pause. But essentially what that is, is you would be volunteering for the IUPUI grounds team to help them um, beautify our campus through mulching and all kinds of things. We also have the Indiana Sustainability Resilience Conference, which is a gathering of Indiana sustainability professionals. This event has evolved out of the Indianapolis Sustainability Summit, which we co-hosted with the city of Indianapolis for the past two years. And as of this year, we have expanded it to a statewide audience. And our theme is sustainability as an economic driver. There is a business lens this year. 
the date for that is September 2nd. Mark your calendar now. It will take place at the IUPUI Campus Center and we would absolutely love to see you there. And like we said, this is just a tiny glimpse into what we do and how you can get involved. So there's many, many more ways that we were not able to list off here. We have green event certification. If you are a student or a staff member who plans a lot of events on campus, we have guides for how to do that sustainably. And we have a certification program that rewards those who are taking sustainability into account when they're planning these events. We also have volunteer gardens in the hour, or I'm sorry, <laughs> volunteer hours in the garden. Uh, typically that would be twice a week for a couple hours a day, but right now those are on pause as well. There's also campus kitchen shifts, rescue and cooking shifts. If you are living on campus in a residence hall, you can run for sustainability coordinator position and incorporate sustainability throughout um, kind of like living on campus. You can also join one of our student groups. The Student Sustainability Council is very, very active on campus and we work closely with them to coordinate events. There's also the Beekeepers Club and the Energy Club and the Biology Club. And so there's just many opportunities for students to get involved in student organizations. And there's always the option you have an open invitation to reach out to us and to drop by our office if ever you are wanting to get involved in sustainability on campus but not sure how maybe you need an internship have a couple credit hours you need to fill maybe you have a project for your class that requires you to come up with a solution and you want you want to apply that to a real world project this is a perfect opportunity to reach out to us we have a lot going on and we would love to bring you in the fold. And lastly, if you are trying to just maybe attend an event or support our office by volunteering, follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at IUPUI Sustain. We are updating that daily to promote events and volunteer opportunities. So if you are wanting to get involved but you didn't necessarily see something that was a good fit for you or Maybe you don't have time to commit to an ongoing volunteer uh, activity. This is a good way to find those events. Of course, worth noting, this is a part of the virtual Earth Month series. We have a lot more activities that are going to be coming through April 1st through 30th, like this webinar series, how-to videos, social media takeovers, um, even lifestyle tips from our interns and us who are all at home right now and much more. So right here, you can see a couple of those activities listed, but if you want more, I would recommend that you go to our website. Actually, if you want any additional information about anything that we've discussed throughout this presentation, you can probably find more information on our website, sustainability.iupy.edu. It is organized much the same way that this presentation was organized, uh, academics, operations, engagement. It is a wealth of resources and knowledge. So definitely recommend that you go check it out if you have not already. And if you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at sustindy at iupy.edu. We love hearing from you guys. Uh, we wanna work closer with students, schools, professors. So if you are even remotely interested, you wanna explore the possibility for partnering with us, go ahead and shoot us an email. And lastly, but very important, follow us on social media at IUPUI Sustain, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So any other thoughts, Jessica? Any, any final thoughts? Yeah, can you go back one slide? I just wanted to let yeah. you know. Um, so in addition to the events that, that we have here on campus that we're running, uh, we are also crowdsourcing a uh, bunch of Earth Month events, webinars, all this stuff happening across the state in the sustainability space from all of our community partners. Um, so we've been sharing that on social media as well. So you can go, you know, take a class from one of our local sustainability consulting groups in the city or USGBC, which is the US Green Building Council, if you're really interested in sustainable building design. The Environmental Resilience Institute has some ongoing webinars about water, uh, so we have crowdsourced that for you all so that we can be a one-stop shop as we're all 
adjusting to a new normal, that you can still be engaged, you can still learn, and we can still uh, keep sharp during this time so that when we're all back together, we can just hit the ground running. Thank you, Jessica. So now we kind of want to open it up and see if you guys had any questions, if you had any ideas, any curiosities, any funny jokes. We will take them all. No pressure. But we're gonna we're gonna wait just a second here to see if anybody has any questions. David's got a question in the chat. Where will these be posted again? David, are you referring to the recording of this webinar or the future events? Or both? Recording of the webinar. <laughs> Christina? You want to this? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so this is the first webinar that we have recorded and there are none uploaded as of right now, but once this webinar ends, we will take the recording, we will post it on our website, the same website that Jessica referenced, where we are crowdsourcing these opportunities there. We also share our opportunities of virtual engagements and we will have the links to all of the webinars there. We'll also be posting on our social media to let you know that those are there and with links so that you know how to get to that webpage easily. Um, but yeah, we would love for you to check it out. And depending on what the topic is, some of these webinars will actually be embedded throughout our website. So for example, there is a webinar that is coming down the pipeline that will be about how to host a sustainable event and how to get certification. That webinar will eventually serve as a long-term resource for anybody who is wanting to learn more about that certification program. And so we will embed it into our website under the green events page. So lots of different places. Yay, Debbie. <laughs> no, we love working with O'Neill students. So yes, definitely, you know, share the word with them. We're, we're hoping to keep our students sharp right over this over this time period too, and also ways they can get involved. Any other questions or thoughts from anyone? Can you all hear me? Yeah. Hello. So I do have a quick question for volunteer opportunities for things such as your campus kitchen shifts. Do you usually have individual signups for those or do you try to accommodate like say a student group wanted to get involved? So like having a few folks from the same group or how do you like to organize that? So um, I guess we could, we could do both. So typically the sign up is uh, we have a, on our website on the Campus Kitchens page, you can individuals can sign up for a shift. So shifts have a max capacity and it kind of depends on what they're doing that day, usually around two to three students. However, if there's a special group that wants to do something, we encourage um, them to reach out to us and we'll figure out a way to accommodate. Um, so oftentimes, like an example of this is, you know, our garden volunteer days, usually our individual sign up, but sometimes we have faculty who say, I want to bring my whole class out. There are 25 students. Can you accommodate that big of a group? And we'll figure out a way um, to make sure that we can keep everyone busy for a group that big. So usually it's individual sign up, but if you want a group project, we're happy to be creative and work with you to find something that works. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. And just to add on a little bit more about that, we can come and speak with classes about any one of these uh, specific topics or, you know, more broadly what our office does. And so if your class would like to learn more about the Campus Kitchen and what they do, uh, you certainly can come to us and we would love for you to volunteer. But I just want you to know we can also come to you and share more with your class about the Campus Kitchen or maybe both. You know, you learn about it and then you go do it. So that's on the table too. Great, that's awesome, thank you. Cool, well, if anybody doesn't have any other questions, we'll give it one, a couple more cricket squeaks. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think, Christina? I think we can call it? We can call it. All right. You guys have been so awesome. Thank you so much for tuning into this webinar. If you are listening to this webinar after the fact is a recording, don't hesitate to send us an email if you have a question and it wasn't answered here. We'd love to hear from you. 
and we're here to help. Thank you so much. Have a great day, everyone. Be sustainable, Jags. <laughs>